Hi, everyone. I'm Liz Johnson. I'm a doctoral student at Harvard Business School, and I'm excited to share some work in progress that I've been working on in collaboration with Ashley Willens, who is also at HBS. So this work was motivated by our frustration when we saw jobs labeled in terms of skill level. So high skill, low skill, semi-skilled, and so forth. And we saw this happening um, in popular press articles, in academic research, in public policy, um, just across a wide variety of disciplines. And we wondered how labeling jobs like this influenced perceptions of how workers in the jobs should be treated, given there's a rich body of work showing that groups and occupation labels impact stereotyping processes. So we ran two studies that I'll be talking about today, um, trying to answer this question. So in our first study, we looked at how lay beliefs about the skill of a job influenced um, worker treatment outcomes. So participants read a real job posting um, for a Starbucks barista job and were informed about the typical tasks and pay of the job. And then we asked participants how skilled they thought the job was using a, a one um, seven-point Likert item, so from extremely low skill to extremely high skill, and then looked at how those ratings predicted our outcome variables. Oh, this is the question. In the second study, we were interested in kind of what the causal impact of these labels were on worker treatment outcomes. So we asked participants to read a description of a biological technician job, um, which again had a description of the tasks and responsibilities of the job, and both of these also included pay information to control for pay. So after participants read about the job, they were told it was either a low-skill job, a high-skill job, or we didn't provide any information, which was our control condition. We then asked participants to rate four outcome variables. So we asked them what the deserved pay of the worker was per hour. We asked them about how much autonomy workers deserved at work. We asked them how much voice or input into organizational decision making workers deserved. And then finally, we asked about their support for unionization or collective organizing of these workers. And we focused on these variables because prior work and social movements have illustrated how important they are in dismantling gender and racial inequality, and also because they focused on worker empowerment. So what did we find? Um, I'm going to be showing you the standardized beta coefficients for our outcomes, so you can get a sense of the magnitude of the effects. So these are our results for study one. So basically, we see that as ratings of perceived skill increase, there's a significant increase in deserved pay support for greater autonomy at work, greater voice or input at work, and people are more supportive of workers unionizing. And these hold with a bunch of different control variables added. And then this is our results for study two, and this is just the comparison between the high and the uh, low skill condition just for time. But again, we see the exact same pattern of results. When the exact same job is labeled as high skill, people think that workers deserve more pay, more autonomy, more voice, and they're more supportive of workers organizing. So why is this happening? We're currently working on untangling the effects um, or the mechanisms underlying the effects, but we have some preliminary evidence that when a job is labeled as high skill, people see the work that the workers are doing as more demanding and more challenging, which suggests there might be something going on around work ethic or work effort um, and having that dictate what workers kind of deserve which really aligns with prior work on attitudes towards welfare and immigration policy. So in summary, our studies are providing some initial evidence that how we talk about jobs and how jobs are labeled impacts how we think workers deserve to be treated. And so it could perpetuate a lot of negative treatment for workers in jobs that are considered low skill. And we think a high level implication of this work is that we have to emphasize the inherent difficulties and unique skills that all jobs require in order to counteract these negative stereotypes and ensure that workers have increased pay and increased power um, across the labor market. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you for listening.